Thank you, Shara. Good evening, everyone. My name is Fanta Kaba, and I'm a project manager here with the city of Fort Worth capital delivery. And so this is a community meeting for a traffic signal and pedestrian improvement projects that we have at the John T. White and Sandy Lane intersection, which is currently in council district five. And I'm the, um, as just mentioned, I'm the city of Fort Worth project manager. And then the project engineer is Cobb Finley and associates. So for the agenda, we'll go over the project background and then we'll give a project update. We'll go over the project schedule. And then lastly, we'll give the project contact information. So project background, this project was identified for traffic signalization in 2022. And the objectives include improving traffic flow at their intersection during peak hours. Um, reducing delay and improving pedestrian safety at the intersection. We'll be installing pedestrian actuated signals with push buttons. We'll also be in adding ADA compliant ramps and crosswalks. And then this project is funded by the 2022 bond. And this is an area of the intersection. So we see that there's a school And it's currently stop controlled, stop sign control. And then this is an aerial with the proposed signal layout overlaid on it. So then the crosswalks can be seen and then the proposed lane assignments. So all four directions will have a left, left turn, protect the left turn and then We'll be improving the side, st side street geometry and then updating the ramps as well as needed. And then, so this, this project is part of the 2022 bond and it was chosen based on the signal warrant. So we did a signal warrant just to make sure that we can install a signal here. 24 hour counts were taken in 2020 to confirm eligibility. And then those, those traffic counts were measured against the signal warrant requirements of the Texas Manual for Uniform Traffic Control Devices. And then next I'll go over which warrants were met. So of the nine warrants, two warrants were met. One for the eight hour vehicular volume, and then the second warrant for the four hour vehicular volume. And then, so in this screen, so these are the counts that were measured, and then these are the counts, these are the counts to require that we're comparing against to see if it meets the requirements for signalization. And these are from the Texas Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices. And so at the bottom here, the first, this first warrant that was met, this is for eight hour volumes. So we see over here, it was met of, in nine hours of the day and over here 14 hours of the day when the warrant it's, um, eight hours, so we've met it quite a few times. And then this is the second warrant. So the red dots are the traffic counts that we've received that we did. And then anything higher than this blue line, it's, it's what's needed to meet the warrant. So we see we've met the threshold a few times. And then project schedule. So the project is currently in the design phase, and then this meeting tonight, it's our um, design community outreach. We'll plan for another meeting right before construction. That will be the pre-construction pre community meeting. And then we are currently in the right-of-way acquisition process. We're hoping to complete that in May of this year. There is no utility relocation required. And then we're hoping to start construction this summer and the duration will be for about eight months with a construction cost estimate of just under $900,000.
project contact information. So the project design project engineer is Aaron Freak with Cobb Finley and Associates. And then his number is 817-769-1672. And his email is africk at cobbfinley.com. And then my contact information, it's 817-682-3181. Email is fanta.caba at fortworthtexas.gov. And that was the end of the presentation. So if anyone has any questions, feel free. Any comments, suggestions? What is that signal warrant? I mean, like what what is it actual something you put out there? I mean, what is that? So after accounts are taken, so this slide has a background of what the warrants are. So basically we took, we got traffic counts and then we measured those against the thresholds needed to meet these warrants. And these come, this threshold comes from the Texas Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices. So these are the counts here that we received in 2020. And then those counts were measured against these requirements to determine whether or not a signal is warranted. So is that y'all when y'all put one of those black uh, hoses across the street and people run, the cars go over them? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. How you do the counts? Yes. Okay. So there's many ways to get counts. That's one of one of the ways. How else would you do a count? You can do manual counts as well. Just. <laughs> at the intersection and, and count count cars as they go through. There's there's multiple ways. That'd take a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, for the warrants. So this side over here shows the nine warrants, and then just a background of what those warrants represent. And then, as I mentioned, for the two warrants that were met, we show the counts that we received and then measured against the requirements for the warrant. So that's what this one is for the first warrant. And then the second warrant, these, these red dots represent our counts. And then this blue line is the requirement or the threshold. So do you think that traffic will be, um, you couldn't go down Sandy Lane and turn right or left on uh, onto John T. White once this begins, or will they just have it like sectioned off or something? Like during the construction when they're, when they're doing what they need to do. You're asking about the conditions during construction? Yeah, like, cause if I, if I, I live really close to there, so if I'm coming down Sandy and and I want to make a right to go to 820. I would still be able to do that while they're doing whatever they're doing to, to create this, right? So in the pre-construction meeting, we'll give more details regarding the the conditions during construction and what you can expect. Okay. I have, I'm sorry, I have a question. I was wondering about the origins of this. How does this, I mean, who brought this up? How did this become, how did somebody say, hey, I wonder if we need a traffic light here? Was this from citizens or is this something that the city council did? I mean, how does that work? So for this specific uh, intersection, I would have to get back to you, but typically, you know, anyone is op it, we're open to anyone suggesting, you know, signal requests. And then with those requests, we, we like to do signal warrant studies just to see if the conditions were met. And then after we know which ones are met, we'll just go through and then like a ranking system and see which ones, because, you know, ideally we'd, we'd have funding for all of them, but as funding allows, we we have to prioritize. I would be interested in knowing that if you want to get back to me on that, how did this, because this is almost a million dollars. And um, I think that even though it is, uh, it is bond money, uh, you know, we need to be good stewards of public money because 
those of uh, you know people with tax that have to pay their property taxes. That's how this money gets paid back. So it's because I live here. I've lived here for was it twenty four years now. I mean, would it be nice to have a traffic light there? Sure, it'd be nice. Do I have to have one there? I've never seen the traffic so bad that you know a traffic light seems warranted. So I, that's why I'm kind of curious. Is something bad happen? because I know sometimes these things it's political and sometimes things get triggered like I don't know some kid got hit crossing the street there or something like that and somebody said you know there ought to be a traffic light here but I'm looking at the price tag on this thing and I'm going hey you know all things being considered I could probably live without a thousand dollar bill so yeah I would like to know how did this get started it's sure public has the schools there yeah, I have a I have a question kind of linking to what Paul said. Um, I've only lived here for five years, but in that five years, I've seen a definite increase in traffic at that four way stop. But the worst time of day is in the afternoons for the pickup at that school mm -hmm. where people park on John T. White to pick their children up. Um, I mean, it's just an unsafe environment, both for people and for vehicles. So I don't know if that uh, after school safety is being addressed in this traffic situation as well. If it's not, it, it would be a good consideration. Sure, thank you. Thank you for pointing that out. And then um, just to point out again, so I will get back to you on how, how this specific intersection came about. But as I mentioned before, we do have to meet warrants. We can't just put a signal wherever we want. And we did have two warrants met for the signal. Panda, I just want to add a few things on it. Uh, Paul, can you just uh, type your email ID or phone number on the chat so that we could reach out to you regarding uh, how this location was prioritized? And like Fanta said, we have multiple um, elements that we consider before prioritizing an uh, location, like uh, requests from the residents, same political again, and if we have any crashes at the location or if someone has complained about the delays, uh, complaints about not getting a chance to do a left turn or something like that. So all these factors really play into account to prioritize a location. And Karen, I want to answer your question too. We are installing pet push buttons and ADA ramps as a part of this project. So that will give a good safety element for the pedestrians to cross or the students to cross uh, the intersection up before or after school hours. Uh, that's great. That's one part of it. The other part is, is having the, all of the cars, there'll be as many as 20 or 30 cars parked in the right hand lane of John T. White. So there's not a shoulder, it's just they are parked in a traffic lane um, and there's not access in the front of the school. I mean, it's this is probably bigger than the scope of what you're talking about, but as far as safety measures, it would be good to consider it. I've got to jump off to another meeting, but I sure appreciate this. Thank you all. Thank you. I had a question. <clears throat> um, there's on Sandy Lane at Lowry Road. There's also an area there. And I was wondering how it's only a two two stop signs now. I think it should be a four four way stop. How do you go about getting two more stop signs for the other way? Because people are coming off Sandy Lane, going down Sandy Lane, and people at Lowry Road that are on Lowry Road either direction have to stop, you know, and wait for people to go by. And I think it'd be safer to have stop signs at each corner than just two. City Council. City Council? Like Gina? Yeah, you bring it to your City Council person's uh, attention and let it go up from there. And, you know, it's, it's, they'll do a study and those kind of things. And, and let me say this. I'm, one of the questions I wondered, is this a done deal? In other words, we're getting this traffic light no matter what. Is this already a done deal? Yes, so there were meetings previously um, with the community just to go over the, the 2022 bond projects. 
So that would have been the time to raise any objections. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're, we're here to take your, your comments as well. So we'll, we'll take a note, any, any, um, any feedback that you have, we're, we're here for that feedback and then. Right. And I want to be clear. I'm not against this. Yes. It's just that, uh, you know, a lot of times when people are spending taxpayers money, they act like it's just money that was floating around in the air somewhere, because although this thing comes in just under nine, uh, 900 K. It's really going to go over budget because it's government and all things in government go over budget. So it's a million plus for this four ways for this traffic light that we're going to put up. And after, uh, I'm sorry, I can't, my neighbor, I can't remember the lady's name that just left the meeting. Uh, you know, she's probably right. It probably is a good idea for that. Uh, cause I don't come through there during the, uh, when the kids are getting dropped off and picked up, but yeah, I would imagine it is probably hectic in that area during that time. But yeah, I was just wondering. So I put my, phone, I've sent my email address to you. I just want to know how did this get started? That was all. Sure. Um. Thank you. Thank you for your feedback. We will reach back out to you with the contact information you provided with that um, further background information. Are there any other uh, projects from the bond that'll be going on on our side of town over here that are coming up? Or that are under consideration from bond money that's on the east side here. That you know. Of? So, we have, um. Other intersection improvement projects. Along John T. White, no, not not off the top of my head. Okay, but if you want to put your contact information in the chat, we can send you a list of all the. The bond projects and okay. the intersection improvement projects and new traffic signals. Okay. At Trinity at Regis, I'm not sure if it's the same council district. It's completely on the east part, almost close to Euless. Um, have one more traffic signal project coming up at that location. Okay, is that everything you need there? Right. Did you type in your email in the chat? Yeah, I, I sent I sent it to uh, Fanta. Oh, okay, you sent it to Fanta. Okay. Yeah. That's what I need to send it to, you, right? Yeah. So I'm sharing the PowerPoint right now. So let you me stop sharing really quick just to make sure I receive. Yes, I see your email. Is that good? Yes. Have any more questions? Fanta, I was just looking at our list. It looks like in the mobility team, we have seven projects in council district five. So it seems like, um, yeah, we could provide some, some of that information. Um, yeah, that's what I'd like. It's just, just in my district, not the whole city of Fort Worth. Yeah, sure. Thank you. District five. So is that it? Um, yes, that is all we had to share from our end. Okay. Um, how will we know when the next meeting is coming up? Will, will we get a thing in the mail? I got a thing in the mail. Uh, so once we finalize our plans and once we have everything with have contractor on board, we'll be sending out the mailers again. And in that meeting, we will be going over the construction timeline. What will our traffic control look like? Will we have any details or uh, what would be the timing of our construction? And uh, is our point of contact from the contractor at that point? If you have any issues or complaints, we'll go over those points in that meeting. Okay. All right, well, thank you. I'm gonna leave the meeting. 
Thank you. Thank you. And we'll send you the list of projects as well. Yeah, just for district five. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Th thank you. And thank you for having this meeting and having it in such a way that we could attend it. Cause you know, I had to rush home for this. It would have been hard for me to get to a particular place. So thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you.